Batman, okay? He's like a vigilante. But no, I wish even talk about Dexter. I think Dexter and Game of Thrones were two TV shows that were pretty fucking good, pretty top tier. And then just so disappointing towards the end. Like, I don't know what was going on with Dexter. But yeah, anyway, so there's a new TV series out with Jeffrey Dahmer. And I don't know, I played the first like 15 <laughs> minutes to see if I can get into it. And I, I don't know, just boring. But I just don't really, I don't know. I just like, I just don't really care about this guy with mommy issues who doesn't know how to socialize with people and ends up torturing kids, you know, animals. And then like, I don't know, just a bunch of really crazy fucked up shit. Like there was a lot of signs that this guy was fucking crazy, but I guess it's like back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And it's like, you know, people are just like, well, hopefully he doesn't do anything else. So this man right here, this is Tracy Edwards. And he testifies against Jeffrey Dahmer in court, in trial, I think face to face. Like that is fucking scary as shit. Can you imagine being in the same courtroom being across from someone who almost fucking murdered you, that's fucking terrifying. Um, even if they're like shackled up and chains and stuff like that. I don't know. Like that could be really traumatizing too. And so he was, what well, I think he was the only victim that escaped and survived. Um, apparently, I think a couple months before, I think there was another victim who was, I think it was like a 12, 13, 14 year old boy that ended up escaping. This is like really effed up, by the way. Um, escaped from Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment, went to the police, okay? And then the police took him back to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment where the, you know, the boy ended up getting murdered and it was like some really messed up stuff. So I don't, like, I don't, that's what I, it's so sad. It's crazy. I don't know. Like, that's so sad. You always see that in movies, right? Where it's like, oh, finally the victim escapes the, you know, the, the, the grasp of its killer, their killer. And then they run to the police and the police fucks up, brings them back and they end up getting captured all over again. And like, I don't know, that's just so sad. It's just crazy how that happened in real life. But I mean, I heard that the two detectives or officers were fired for it, but I, I don't know, man. That's just some really, that's, that shit's on their conscience for the rest of their fucking lives. But anyway, so I wanted to watch this. Uh, this is back in 1992 and I was alive in 1992. Alive back then. Um, this is Tracy Edwards and he's going to testify. So I just want to watch it for a little bit. Uh, it's not too long. It's only 30 minutes. This audio might be a little rough. Then, sir, would you tell us your name and Tracy. spell your last name for us? Tracy Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Mr. Edwards, we're going to ask you to speak up very loudly into the microphone. Okay. Uh, I would like to know in what state do you reside at the present time? Louisiana. In it's going to be a little, uh, not the smoothest, you know? It's going to be a little bit like... But, you know, it's from 1992. <laughs> At least we get pretty decently clear footage, though. How old are you, sir? 32. 32? Yeah, he's 32 years old. I think this happened to him when he was 30 or 31. And you are single? Yes. And you were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on July the 22nd, 1991. Who the fuck reads the date? <laughs> Hold on a second. I know this is trout. I should be laughing, but... Who the fuck reads the date like that? 1991? Was this guy? Was <laughs> I've never heard anyone say 1991 like that before. Wait, wait, hold on a second. For those of you guys who were born in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, have you guys ever heard anyone say the year like that? <laughs> okay, okay. Serious face. Yes. And at or about that time on that late afternoon, did you have occasion to see a person that you knew at that time or subsequently learned was a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Dahmer? Yes. And you know that Mr. Dahmer you're speaking about is a defendant in this case to my right, correct? Yes. And that, uh, let me, I made a record, I showed the identification. Oh, fuck, is it gonna show him? Sir, would you indicate where Mr. Dahmer is seated in the courtroom? This over here. Right. He doesn't want to look at him. Look at that. Why would he want to look at him? Look, look, look at that motherfucker over there, man. In the middle between my two associates. Is that him right there? Yo, where is Glock? Wait, 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 wait a second. Is Jeffrey Dahmer one of the serial killers that people say is really good looking? Or is that, is that a different serial killer? Is it Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah, right there? That's supposed to be the good looking dude? It's yeah. Is that right? That's right. Okay. The record should reflect the defendant's been identified. Oh, a different guy? Now, uh, Mr. Edwards, you and I met for the first time last evening. Yes. And you came up from Louisiana at my request. Oh, Ted Bundy. Oh, I'm sorry. I get all these, like, mommy issue dudes all fucking mixed up. Okay. Uh, t oh, Ted Bundy. Okay. Ted Bundy's the one that targeted couples and women, right? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if people were obsessed with 
this motherfucker too because you know they thought he was good looking or something. Just, uh, with your attorney. Right. Mr. Saeed, S Y E D, Salet, S A L E T. That's correct. And you came up here to testify to the events, as you recall them, that occurred on the late afternoon, early evening, early morning hours of July the 22nd and the morning of. Wait, late afternoon, early out. Wait, what? <laughs> Who's this guy asking the questions? <laughs> what time of the day was it? He just named like three different times. Of July the 23rd, 1991. That's correct. So that you know, Mr. Edwards, your name is known to the jury because there has been testimony concerning what happened to you and at the apartment of Mr. Dahmer. Do you understand? Sure. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Where did, did you know Mr. Dahmer by name prior to that date? I've uh, seen him a couple of times before then. I didn't know his name personally. All right. Did you ever talk to him before that date? Yeah, apparently serial killers back then had a thing for driving the punch buggy. The cute little punch buggy car. I'm like, why? You can't fit bodies in there. Why, why drive the punch buggy? Like I said, I don't really pay attention to these like serial killer types. Um, actually, hold on. I take it back. Um, I don't find serial killers fascinating. Um, I think there were some female serial killers though, that were like a little bit interesting. But yeah, other than that, serial killers are just not. I don't know, for your eyes. Okay, let's do this. How many in a message? The Night Stalker. Yeah, I heard the Night Stalker did have fans. Like, bro, he's like so scary looking, man. He looked like fucking Barack of fucking Mortal Kombat. Y'all see his teeth? <laughs> Speaking to him, saying hello as he passed by. Yeah. Just casual, friendly. Casual, yeah, friendly. Hellos. Hellos, yeah. Where was it that you saw him in the late afternoon, early morning hours of July the 22nd? Grand Avenue Mall. And that was in Milwaukee. Correct. Downtown on Wisconsin Avenue. Wisconsin, correct. Were you with somebody or were you alone? A couple of her friends, yeah. Okay, so the record is absolutely clear. You are not a homosexual, are you? No, not at all. Okay. So you were with a couple of your buddies, were yeah, you? That's correct. And I guess, like, what's the point of asking that question? I think back in the early 90s, I think most people were really open about being homosexual back then. If I remember correctly. Because I, I feel like people weren't really open about being gay until, like, I don't know, even in, like, maybe early 2000s, right? I mean, I wasn't, like, I was, like, a kid back then, so I wouldn't know. But, like, I feel like even when I was, like, you know, mid-90s, 2000s, like, I don't know, I don't think we're that open. And what were you doing? Uh, we was drinking beer, just talking, hanging out, you know. About 6 o'clock at night, was it? Yeah, about 6, 6.15, whatever. Did you have occasion then to see Mr. Dahmer? Yeah, he approached us eventually and started talking to us. Yeah. Were you three black males? Yeah, uh, one, one white, two black males. Okay. So you're friends? Yeah, my best friend was white, yeah. When he came up and started talking to you, what is it that Mr. Dahmer said to you? Uh, he said he was just in the city from Chicago. He was taking care of her sick grandmother, I believe, in West Allis. Yeah. And did he have any further conversation with you and your friends? Yeah, he was just talking. He said he was a professional photographer. He usually pays people for pictures. And stuff. Oh, God. And how many professional photographers back then were so fucking creepy? Oh, man. I remember, like, dude, if you guys ever had, like, MySpace, you know, people would be slaying your DMs. Like, hey, I'm a professional photographer. Do you want? I could take pictures of you. Like, because you have model qualities. Like, to be interested and of course i'll do it for free you know i'll pick you up in my yellow punch buggy or sometimes i drive my white van you know the little cute van that drives around oh god i don't know man people talk for a professional fire oh, you gotta be careful those people not nowadays i think nowadays a lot of like normal photographers out here but like back then if you're a professional photographer i don't know what the fuck that means i'm about to make a kidnap <laughs> i don't oh something broke um i had a weirdo that kept coming to my work ass oh at your work? Oh, that is so fucking creepy. That is one of the worst things you can fucking do, okay? To harass someone when they're at work. Because obviously you can't really be fighting back, you know? You're at work. You gotta be professional. Or when you're like, when you're like creeping on someone, when they're going out on their like daily, like, you know, routine shit. Like if you, somewhere where you'll see them often, right? Like especially like the gym and stuff like that. Like, ooh. Yeah, I don't know. People, man. Or they just kept asking you and you're just like, oh, I'm okay. I'm busy. Oh, what about next weekend? Ne you know what? Next weekend, I'm also busy then. Oh, okay, what about three months from now? 
you can't book that far out. Oh, you know what? Three months from now, I think my mom is coming to town. So yeah, unfortunately not. Okay, how about next year? <laughs> oh, next year I'm gonna be fucking dead, okay? <laughs> Told her friends that she met a guy at the mall and he was like, hey, you look like a model. I want to take pictures of you. And she went out and go met up with him and then yeah, shit happened. So just be careful. Sometimes if it's too good to be true, it might be too good to be true, okay? Bring a friend, bring some backups, you know, bring some weapons with you. <laughs> but yeah, just be careful. The one thing that really haunted me, or one of the many things that haunts me, um, you guys ever hear about uh, this, I think she's like a college student who was out at the bar. She left, decided to leave early. She calls in an Uber, but she makes the mistake of getting in the wrong fucking car. So the car that she gets into was a guy who was like patrolling the area, waiting to pick up someone. And she ended up being the one, you know, she got in the car, she was drunk, and it wasn't her Uber. And um, her boyfriend was trying to track her and he was able to see like, you know, she wasn't going home. She was heading towards like other directions and he was like trying to, you know, like it's actually really sad that like he saw her moving along on like the Finds Friend app. And of course, you know, like I think hours later, like she was found um, dead. It was like really sad. Yeah, finally, the Dahmer's victims are more focused. Oh, you should watch it. It's so good. Okay, maybe I'll check it out then. I do like the actor that plays Dahmer. That's the only reason why I was initially interested in it, because he was also the same actor that was in American Horror Story. Stuff like that. If we, anybody was interested in a photographer, he usually pays people for pictures and stuff like that. If we, anybody was interested in making money at that time. To, to have to pose for pictures. Yeah. Did he describe right. the kind of pictures that you were going to be posing for if you chose to take him up on the offer? Uh, he said nude. Nude. Right. Now, after he said that to you, what did you and your friends do? They were just talking, discussing it, you know, seeing what was going on, yeah. And what did you end up doing? Did you remain at Grand Avenue or did you go somewhere else? Uh, we proceeded from there. He said he was going to buy all those guys beer, rum, and coke, you know, watch videos or something like that. Rum and coke, did you yeah, say? Yeah, we, we went to the liquor store on Wisconsin Avenue, 7th and Wisconsin Avenue. So you walk from Grand Avenue down to 7th and Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, I think this was like his thing. He would go to bars that were known to be like, I, don't know, I guess like sort of like undercover gay bars back then. And he would just buy like rounds of drinks for like other people and see... I don't know if he like chose who would come back to his apartment or if he was just kind of like, hey, whoever wants to come back to my apartment, like just come. Like, yeah, I don't know how he like chose his victim or anything like that. Oh, she's a female serial killer. We're in America. Yeah, up, so to speak. Yeah, At between that fifth and sixth, seventh, something like that. Okay. I'm not really sure. The general area of sixth right. or seventh in Wisconsin. Right. Fifth and sixth, seventh, something like that. Okay. I'm not really sure. The general area of sixth right. or seventh in Wisconsin. Right. Were it, was it going to be the three of you and Mr. Dahmer were going to stay together or was it agreed upon that one or others of you were going to go with Mr. Dahmer or was no, there no agreement? Oh, I think this is the, um, yeah, I think this is the prosecutor. I don't think this is the defense attorney. Uh, they were going to meet up with us eventually later on that evening. Yeah. Meet, meet up with who? Uh, Jeffrey at his apartment, but he uh, gave them the wrong address at that time. Okay, so yeah. did you, the three of you, you and your two friends and Mr. Dahmer walked down to a liquor store and what happened when you got to the liquor store? I saw my brother, we started talking. At this time, Jeff was talking to my other friends. So you, you say you saw your brother. He wasn't one of the three that you were with. No, then. no. But you saw him on the street? Yeah. Okay, so you had conversation. Right. Okay, did, did, did anyone go into a liquor store and buy anything? Uh, Mr. Dahmer brought liquor. Yeah, so he went into beer. a liquor store? Right. And when he came out, who was still there? Okay. When he Damn, so he just like openly just walked around in public with his like potential victims and shit? Didn't give a fuck? Came out, oh, we were all still there. And Everyone. then what happened? Tell us what happened then. Okay, he was talking to them. Then we were going to uh, go up the street. I was going to go home and change and everything at this time. So we proceeded. He, we caught it. Who the fuck are these people then? Okay, so they, you guys in chat are saying this is Dahmer's attorney. Okay. Uh, he was asking some weird questions at the beginning over here, but now I'm just like, oh, okay, maybe it's like the prosecutor. All right, we'll see. Cab at the bus station, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, what was your plan as you were in front of that liquor store after Mr. Dahmer came out with the liquor and you had been talking to your brother? What was your plan? To, what were you going to do? You say you were going to go home and change clothes? Yeah, and eventually I was going to go over there, you know, and maybe check out what he was talking about, about making the money at that time. So yeah. your interest was in making some money. Right. Did he tell you how much you would be paid if you did pose for him? He said $100 for 
You had no idea, did you, that this was for any homosexual kind? No, he didn't come across like that, and he didn't even act like it at that time. Okay. Okay. So now your friends are still there, and you're going to go home and you order a cab for the, for, for the, uh, over at the bus depot. What happens? Tell us what happens. Okay. And then we go, we, me and Dimer, my friends say they're going to go and change and call up the girls, and we'll meet up later on, you know. Did, yeah. Was there an address given as to where you were going? He gave them some address that wasn't correct. You, know. you later found that out? Right, from my friends. Yeah. What happened then? Who else remained there when this was all... Well, $100 back then. I don't know. $100 back then. Just to be nude? Yeah, that was, that was a lot of money. Even $100 now is worth <laughs> I mean, not worth it. Don't fucking do that. Don't go to a fucking stranger's house. But, I mean, $100, if you think that, like, the person's, like, legit, it's like, oh, okay, sure, why not? Like, you know, just pose nude for $100, sure, why not? But, yeah, I don't know. I think that, like, they're, like, people like me, I'm always wary of people. I'm always suspicious of people. But there are some people that are just very trustworthy of people, like, who are very trusting of other people, which is, like, not a bad thing. It's not bad to be trust trusting of other people. But sometimes you just run into someone who's a real motherfucker and they'll fuck you over and shit. But, yeah. I think it's more healthier to operate in a world where you trust other people more than you like kind of like think they're going to like kill you and murder you and stuff like that. But yeah. Transpired. Just you and Mr. Dahmer or you, Mr. Dahmer and others? Uh, after it all had transpired, it was me and Mr. Dahmer in the cab, you know, leaving. You met up at about quarter of six, six o'clock, six fifteen. What time is it now at this time? It's maybe uh, 630 as we get to 25th and West, 26th in Wisconsin. So you stop yeah. at 26th in Wisconsin yeah. and what happens there? Okay, we get out the cab then, and then he suggested he go to so the store many and get witnesses. cigarettes before he went to his apartment. What? And to another store where you're exposed to more witnesses? And uh, after, um, uh, go, yeah, after Jeffrey Dahmer was fucking did brazen you go to his shit. apartment? You give a fuck with the witnesses. Yeah. What route? Uh, through the alleys, through the back way. We was entered the any, back. Was there any discussion as to why you were taking that route? Said it was safer. People wouldn't bother us or whatever. I think I think this happened to him when um, he was in his 30s, actually, when he was 30 years old. Because right now he said he's 32. I think this happened when he was like 31 or 30. Uh, I was trying to read an article just to kind of like um, see what's going on. At the time that you were walking with him towards his apartment, what was your plans on doing when you got to the apartment? Really drinking the beer. I wasn't really sure if I was going to pose or not. You know, yep, I wasn't really sure at that point. No. You at least were contemplating maybe you would. Well, yeah, I was going to make up my mind once I got there or whatever, you know. Were you in need of money? Yeah, I just started working and the offer sounded good at that time. Okay. Now, when you got to his apartment, uh, how was he acting? Tell us about his... Uh, how it smelled. Tell uh, me about his demeanor. You know what I mean by that, Mr. Edwards? Yes, how was he acting? Just like a normal, everyday person, you know, friendly, good conversationalist. He was talking about the military, things of that nature. Yeah. Had military you been in the military? Uh, my father retired in the Air Force, so I've been to several different bases. I was born on an Air Force, Army base in Fort mm, Carson. He was trying to connect that's with the, the kind of thing you were talking to. It's like a family thing, you know, so I know a lot about it. Had he been drinking alcohol? Yeah, I consumed some. He was drinking beer at the time. Well, saw. the time that you were, like, going to his apartment, was he intoxicated? No. Had no, he no. been drinking? Yeah, I'd been drinking a couple how, of beers. How about you? Were you intoxicated? No, not at all. Had you had something to drink? Uh, I sipped maybe a little beer of my friend's beer. That was it. Yeah. All right, now you get to the apartment. Do you go in the back way? Yes, correct. Uh, you went up to the apartment. Tell us what happens when you get up to the apartment. Tell us what you observed. What your senses told you? Okay, F first of all, it seemed like a normal apartment. When we got inside, he turned off burglar alarms, I asked him why. First, it was a foul odor, okay? Mm. Tell and us about that. What kind of an odor? It was just like yeah, apparently, uh, it was so bad that like the neighbors would complain about it. And I think he would tell the neighbors, like, oh, I had like bad meat in the fridge and I threw it out. And then like they'd be like, no, it still fucking smells or something like that. Like an odor. I didn't quite know what it was. You know, he told me a sewer pipe had broke and management would take care of it. You know? And did you accept that? Yes, because I worked around at construction companies before and when pipes bust, sewer pipes bust, they smell. You know? okay. So I brought that. So you say he, you, your first thing he did was notice the odor. He opened the door? 
to the apartment? Yes. And you walked in? Yes. He turned off something. What did he turn off? Alarms. Oh, I heard about that too, the dead fish tank. I did hear about that. Did you ask him about that? Yeah, and he said the part of the neighborhood he was in, he was protecting this property, things like that, cameras, VCRs, TVs, things of that nature. Did you accept that? Yes, I did. VCRs. After getting in Who the apartment, can you generally describe the apartment, both the apartment that you saw then and the apartment that you saw, the other parts of the apartment you saw? Tell, tell the jury what the apartment was like. It was like... Normal, pretty decent apartment, had nice things in it. You know, it had certain boxes sitting on the front, Murata Axe boxes. I asked him about it. He said he cleaned bricks with those, you know, which you can use that type of axe to clean bricks. So I brought that also. Wait, what is it? Murata, Mar what? To clean, to clean bricks? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you just said. He, you asked him about some boxes? Yeah, that were laying in the front living room floor. And what did he tell you about those? That he cleaned brick with the murotic acid. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I was like, wait, is this a 90s thing? Okay. Wait, was he using acid to like, get, get his victim's bodies to, does that, does that work? Does it work like that? Oh my God, it must have smelled so bad. Acid too? Now, was the apartment small, large, medium? What, give us the size. No, kind of medium size, yeah. All right. Now, did you, when you went in there, you went in, as you entered, were you in the living room? I remember not to furrow my yes. eyebrows. I do that and a lot. Where did, what was the living room? What did you see in there? The boxes you told us about? The boxes. It's a couch. There's a fish tank there also. A black lamp. Yeah, there was a little table-like on the left side. Could you see a refrigerator? Yeah, I could see the refrigerator on my left. Was it, was it close to the living room? Yeah, maybe eight feet from the living room. And so it was just How off the living room. How many refrigerators do you have? Now, did you stay in that room or did you go to another room right away? Uh, we stayed in that room for a okay. while. And where did you sit, if you did? Okay, at the end of the sofa, like I am now, this is a sofa, I was at this end, and He's he was at this side. Referring to the jury, I mean, a witness box, if that were a sofa, he would be at that end, that is the end where he's seated on the witness stand, which would be the part closest to the judge. Is that right? That's correct. He would drill holes in her skulls and put acid or, or hot water while they're alive to make them zombies? Where did Mr. Dahmer, what did he do? He sat like here, maybe a couple of feet from me. Not my close left. to you. Uh, maybe two feet. You in fear of anything at that time? Not at all. Okay, and what did the two of you do? Okay, he said we were still talking, chatting, you know. He asked me, was I interested in doing the photography? You know, I told him I, would, I was still contemplating, so therefore he offered me a beer and a rum and coke mixture at that point. Now, you're fully clothed. He spiked yes. their drinks, right? Okay, and you're sitting on a couch. Right. And he offers, he talks to you about uh, these, this posing, and you weren't sure you are going to do it. Right. How much had you been offered to no, do the posing? No, you're good, hundred dollars. Okay. And when he get, brings you the beer, he brings you rum and coke? Yeah, he brings that. Yeah, he brings the, the beer first, and then he brings the rum and coke. How big of a glass? Maybe that big. Yeah. About four inches about high? four inches. Yeah, three and a half, something like that. Did you ever taste it? Yeah, I took a few sips. Was it strong? Like, look at him just sitting there. He just looks like he's just so bored. Like, ugh, when is this going to be over? Like, this is so boring. Long, weak, medium, or just about right? Uh, I'm not a big liquor drinker, so it didn't taste that good to me. I don't know. Didn't taste good to you? You don't know if it was strong or not? It's strong or not, no. Okay. I'm like, what did Mr. Dahmer do? Did he likewise have a drink? No, uh, I think, yeah, right. Um, or, or wait, do you think he's reliving it? You know how, like, some serial killers, like, they like to like relive the sh shit they did and they like thrive in it. Beer, but I don't think he drank all of his uh, drink at that time. Was he had, did he have any rum with him? Mm. I just noticed the beer. Right. Okay. What time are we talking about now that you're sitting on the couch so and you get creepy. the beer? You got okay. over there about what time and about, how long after this? It was about before seven, quarter to seven, something like that. So you're sitting on the couch, he brings you a beer yeah. and rum and coke, what happens? Okay, then we just study talking and everything, you know. General talk? General talk. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, then I was just, I don't know, getting a little agitated maybe, you know, because of the smell and things. And then we, he threw my conversation off talking about the fish in the fish tank, you know. 
Okay, when you start talking about the fish in the fish tank, do you bring that up or does he? Uh, he does. And what do you do when he does that? I turn my turn to the right like the fish tank is here. I'm turning all the way over here. You yeah. turn to your right to look at it? To look at the fish tank, right. Is there anything when that in there? happens, what happens to you? Uh, all of a sudden, a handcuff and a knife is pulled on me. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, shit, I thought he, like, drugged him in the rum and coke or whatever the fuck drink. Jesus. Handcuff is placed on your body? Where? Uh, on my left wrist. And you see a knife? Yeah, the knife, yeah. Now... Wait, and he lives in an apartment with people... What? At that moment, what do you do? First, I feel fear. Then I ask him what's going on. You know, this is not necessary, you know, to pull a knife on me at that Are point. you afraid? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have any reason to know why he did that? None whatsoever. Did you have Wait, did his neighbors? Okay, so his neighbors definitely smelled shit, but they didn't ever hear anything? Oh, my God. I guess at this point, he's already gotten away with so many other murders that he was just, fuck it. <laughs> Jesus. Have any idea at that time it was going to happen? No. Tell me about his demeanor at that time when you looked and realized he had a knife and you and a cuff. What was you were only cuffed on one wrist? One wrist. Yeah. What was happening to the other part of the handcuff? Okay, he had it. Where about his the hand. fucking knife? He was holding it. Holding that in the wrist. Yeah. Where was the knife in the other hand? Uh, the knife was like he had here. The knife was in this hand. He had it on me like this. Let the record reflect he was holding his, the knife would, in his right hand as he showed it, holding the cuff in his left hand. Is that right? right. And your left hand is cuff. Yeah, right. Where do you have the knife? What kind of a knife was it? It was like a military knife, knife a machete of some type. Yeah, he had lower, right up under my rib cage. You know. Jesus. Like so he had back, it. Somewhere in the back here. He had it pointed at your rib cage. Yeah. Did you feel it? Touch yeah, it? Yeah, he, he had it on me. He had it against my body. What happened? What was going through your mind? Wait, a, a military knife is like, because when I think of machete, I think of like a big ass, like a big ass one. A military knife is that big? Neighbors heard things and complained, but it was like a black efficiency apartment. He was white in the 90s. Oh, so management took his word and so did the police. Yeah, we're just talking about the other victim who was like, I think like 12, 13, 14 year old boy who was able to escape, went to the police and the police fucking took him back to the apartment. Like that shit is crazy. In the moment that happened, when I you see. realized you had a knife at your side and a handcuff on your hand, what do you think? I think like, you know, what's going on? You know, this guy is so nice and all of a sudden, you know, it's like he's pulling knives and handcuffs and all on me, you know? What'd you do? What'd you say to him? I asked him what the problem was, you know, that it's not necessary to do this, you know? What'd he say? Uh, he told me at that point if I wouldn't do what he said, he would kill me, yeah. Now, tell us about his demeanor at the time that you look at him and you say, what's going on? You don't have to do this. What happens to Mr. Dahmer? What's he like? It's like not the same person that we met at Grand Avenue Mall. How does he different? His face structure seemed different. You know, his body structure is like it wasn't him anymore, you know? It's like it was a totally different guy there. So he here. told you if you didn't do what he told you to do, he'd hurt you. He'd hurt me. What'd you do? Man, poor guy looks so weathered. Like, he's like 32 here, but he like he's so weathered down that it looks like he's like almost like 40s, man. It's just like probably like, he probably is getting night terrors, not sleeping well, stress and shit. Like, damn, it's just like fucking with his head probably. What happened? Tell us what happened yeah. step by step as best and, you can remember. And then all of a sudden oh, he Ted calms down, you know. And then he said he has a key in the bedroom. So we proceed to the bedroom. The key to the handcuffs. Right. Yeah. So you believed he was going to take him off? Yeah. At that point, I had to go along with this guy, you know. And then if I had to find out, so I walked back there with him. He kind of guides me back there, you know. Guides you back with the cuff and the knife? Yeah, right. And you go into the bedroom? Right. What do you see in the bedroom? Uh... A big, about 50, 60 gallon drum barrel, whatever. Do you ever see a 50, 60 drum barrel in anybody's bedroom no, before? Not at all. Do you have any idea? Did you ask him what it was? No, at that point I asked no questions at that time. You know. Was there a bed in that room? Yes. How was the bed? Was it made, unmade? What did, it, what was un, it was unmade. What did, what did you see on the bed, if anything? Something like a stain of whatever yeah, on the bed. What did you think it was? Blood. At that point in time, I wasn't sure. Okay. What did you do when you got in the bedroom as the he's holding on to the cuff and the knife? What did you do? 
and I'm studying this talking, trying to be friends with him. You but know. Did you remain standing? Did you sit down? Oh, he made me sit down at that point. We both sit on the bed. Right. Was it at the foot of the bed, side of the bed, head of uh, the bed? Maybe halfway between. Did that room have a TV set in it? Yes. Was there anything going on on the TV? Yeah, Ew, the get up off my screen! Was playing at that time. There was an Exorcist movie on. Yeah. You know. We, we don't need this. Get, get it off our screen. He's just gonna sit there looking all dopey and shit. <laughs> get the fuck off the screen. Oh, which one of them? Uh, the name I'm not sure. I think it's three. I'm not sure. He's just like chilling. So there was a movie. Did you know it to be part of television or VCR? Uh, VCR. Normally, that's not on regular television, spoken. so yeah. I thought it was VCR. You knew there was a movie show. Right. Did you? I feel like it would be so hard to not get emotional, but maybe he will get like really emotional maybe later on. But yeah, that's fucking tough. Did you see him put it on or was it on? No. What? Especially when the fucking perpetrator is like across the fucking way from you, a couple feet away. When we first got into the apartment, he went through the back to the back bedroom. Maybe he put it on then. I'm not sure. Okay. And then what happened? You're both sitting on the bed? Yes. Are you still in handcuffs? Yes. Is he holding the handcuff? Right. Do you still have the knife? Right. Is it pointed at your side, as you've told us before? Right. You trying to be cool? Very much so. You're not, a, you're not fighting with him? No. Not What's your intention? What are you planning on doing? Uh, getting My away. I was contemplating on at a point, jumping out the window. You know, I was basically talking with this person, trying to let him know I was his friend. Yeah. As you were sitting there <laughs> on the bed, when he had you by the handcuff, Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I read about that, how, like, he made him watch the exorcism movie. Like, fuck, like, hello? <laughs> okay. And a knife at your side. At that time, which would have been maybe 7 o'clock? Yeah, um, I did read up about Tracy Edwards, um, about him after the fact, and it's actually really sad. Something like that. What impression was made upon your mind by the conduct, action, manner, expression and conversation like, I have no doubt that, that you observed like, of Mr. Dahmer. His frame of mind is what you want to know, right? Okay, he acted. At times he would go through like different changes with me, you know? One Tell minute, us about that. One minute he's like nice, then he was telling he didn't want people to leave him or abandon him, things of this nature, you know? Yeah. Well, what did you think about him as a person? What impression was made on your mind of this fellow that you're dealing with here? Yeah, that at times he wasn't himself, and then at times he was, was like a nice guy, you know. He would come and go different times, you know, throughout the whole time. Then he would, like, sit, being quiet at times, watching a movie, wanting me to watch the movie, you know. And I think it's possible, like, I'm just, this is just conjecture here, but it's possible that, you know, maybe Jeffrey Dahmer was switching between the nice guy, the creepy guy, the aggressive guy, because, like, whenever he would switch back to the nice guy, Maybe he'll see like a little light of hope in his victim's eyes or soon be victim's eyes where they're like, oh, wait, OK, maybe I can actually get out of the situation. Maybe I can check him out of it. But then as soon as he takes that away, then he sees like the, you know, that hope just like goes out. I don't know. Maybe that was something that like turned him off or something like I could totally see something like that happening. And just doing a little tiny Like just to fuck sounds, with the victims. You know? Did you observe him, like, him watching the movie of, uh, and how he would react sense to of, the like, movie? Security, you know? right, he would like this star rock no not split personality i mean maybe i don't know what the fuck he's diagnosed with i don't know too much about him but i think he was just playing with his fucking victims came back and forth when he you know certain parts of the movie or whatever and you have to say what did he so say it was probably he fun was for like him. channing and certain you know like what does a cat do when it catches a mouse and kill it right away you like play with your food for a little bit and have fun and make the most out of your experience right so times of rocking back and forth right tell us about his chanting what was that all about um, wait what <laughs> chanting what was he chanting about even sure sir but it was just like i can't tell you the words i couldn't understand what he was saying at that time can you mimic him how it sounded it was like a slow slur like mm, some of that nature some close like that i'm not sure did it keep on for a period of time off and on throughout the ordeal and how about the the movement back and forth how how was that being effectuated uh, just like back and forth, he would do it every now and then. You know? Just as you are rocking in right, your chair. Like this. And chanting. Wait, it wasn't, oh, it was the Asian, it was an Asian boy? Oh, I didn't know the ethnicity. I just knew there was a boy that ran out and then went to the police. Cops made fun of it on the radios, crazy. No Wait, did, did, do we have any recordings of any of this? And chanting. 
Was there any parts of the movie that was going on that you saw that he said anything about? It was like the part about the preacher that used to be a preacher that had got possessed and that uh, and that uh, it would seem like he was like interested in that part. That part had his attention more than anything. You know. so tell us about what you mean by that. What impressions were made upon your mind when this was going on as to had his attention? How, would he, how did he appear to you? It appeared like, like it was like he wanted to mimic it or be like that part, you know, being demonized or whatever in that nature. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed you. Yeah, Jan. like he wanted that, that type of movie, that part, certain parts of that part interested him, you know. It was like he changed with it at times. Then he would get more aggressive, try to get me to handcuff myself, both hands, and he's told me it made him feel more dominant. That time. Okay, did you and he move off of the bed at any time? Yes, he wanted me to lay flat down, stomach down on the floor at that time. Did you at any time go to the bathroom, use the washroom, prior to the time that he asked you to lay down on the floor? No. All right, tell us what happened when, how did that happen, that he told you to lay down on the floor? You know, he told me to lay down face down, put both of my hands behind my back, because he got, he changed again at that point, like he got more aggressive at that time. Okay, now, no. but tell us, tell us, uh, did he still have the knife out? Yes, he still had the knife for him. Do you guys know how long he would keep, keep his victims alive for? If your date is inspired by the actress's run. What did you do? Okay, I kind of like laid on my sides for some reason. I guess God told me not to lay flat down or let this person handcuff me, so I didn't. So you were trying to stop that from happening, but you right. got down on the floor. Right. What did he do? He kind of laid across me, put his head across my chest at that point. And what was he doing with his head? Pardon me? What did it appear to you he was doing with his head? What was he trying to do? Like he was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. Oh, he my God. said he was going to eat your God. heart? Yes, that's correct. Did he still have the knife? Yeah. Where was the knife pointed? When I was on the floor, he had it pointed at my groin area at that time. One knife? He had several, and then he slipped when I managed to slide one underneath the bed. And I guess during a point of time through an ordeal, he didn't know where the knife was, so I didn't know if he felt that was a threat or not. So he still had a knife. You're on the floor. How long does he lay on top of you trying to hear your heart as you've described it? Maybe a minute, minute and a half. And then what, what did you do then? I knew something was about to happen, so I suggested that I go to the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom at that time. And what did he do? He kind of guided me to the bathroom. So when you say he guided, you still had hold of your handcuff? Yes. And you went to the bathroom? Right. Did you urinate? Yeah. Were you able to u utilize your own zipper, or did he touch you at all? Touched me in no way. Didn't attempt to look. He just held me in back. You know. so, so in other words, he didn't try to look at what your penis looked like or anything? Not at like? all. So after urinating, did you think that you were going to be the victim of... Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's the defense attorney, they have to be this way. Did he ask to, to, to engage in any homosexual acts with you? None whatsoever. Okay, so not... Because at this point, the client is the priority, you know? But yeah, I, don't, I still don't know who is questioning it, but people in chat were saying this is the uh, defense attorney. How you leave the bathroom and what happens? Okay, then we go back into the bedroom. <laughs> Sounds very old school and clinical. I mean, this dude over here was saying... In the year of 1,992, or what did he say again? <laughs> it's only, we, we had to, we, we'll rewind back to that. But I was like, who says that? Who says that instead of 1991? Come on now. Yeah. It was like different time spans. We were talking about him leaving his, losing his job. Then he would come to the person that I was first with, you know. And then at certain points, he would change. You know, at first he was talking. To 1,992, yeah, that's what he said. Telling me about how people didn't care for him and things of this nature. And I was trying to comfort him, letting him know that I was a friend, you know, that I wasn't going to try to run away from him or nothing like that. So you were being cool. I guess God, you can say that because I had no control. I was just, it was just, I don't know. Did this continue on for a long period of time during the night? Yes, apparently so. Time seemed to, I don't know. But I stayed in there that long, so it had to be going on throughout the whole ordeal, which it was, so time just, it happened like that. And all this time you're trying to hold him down. Yeah, certain from, points, from, right. Uh, how often would he go in and out of these moods? 
and sorry at the time spans I couldn't really tell you but like he would like I guess if you want to put it together in time every 30 minutes 20 minutes something like that you know and then he would have moods of being just silent you know and I wouldn't say anything try to provoke him or say the wrong thing I would be silent with him so you just let him be alone did you was it was that movie on the whole time a long time it was on a pretty good period of time yeah and when it went off I couldn't tell you did he continue to chant from time to time? Yes, it happened several times throughout the ordeal. Now, when he would watch the movie, did you notice when he would go into this thing that you told us where he would really become fixed on the movie screen? What was happening? How often would that happen? Throughout the movie, maybe every 15 or 20 minutes, and then he would turn around and try to ask me to put both of my hands behind my back, and I wouldn't, you know, do it. I would talk to him. I tell him, "You can trust me. You know, you don't have to do this." And that would calm him down a little bit. Yeah. He had the knife the whole time. Right. He's watching the movie, and he becomes very interested in the movie. Right. You don't do anything. Just sit there. Just sit there and be quiet. And then he would start conversation with you again. Yeah, he was like, like, you're going to have to do this and that. You know, then he told me at a point I was going to have to kill him or he, either he was going to have to kill me at one point. Were you and he drinking during this time? No. So he wasn't running out, bringing you out and getting beers and no, coming back? No, I would have been out the window at that point. Sure. He would have. I heard he got beat to death, but I didn't hear about that part. Yeah, I heard he, I heard Jeffrey Dahmer got beat to death by another inmate in prison. When he was fixed, I'm trying to get some words to understand. Was he intoxicated? I, 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 he had been drinking, but far as being intoxicated, he was not staggering or anything of that nature. But he you know that to some people, when they have too much to drink, change their moods. Was that the kind of mood changes he was having or a different kind of mood change? <laughs> I think this no, was sir. like more of an inner mood change than an alcoholic mood change. What kind of mood change? It's like... Inner mood? Um, yeah, person change, not, not alcohol change. What did you think about this guy? What, what, were you, what was going through your mind as to who you were sitting next to who was doing all these things? A bizarre individual, someone that was very confused at this time. Now there came a time when you went to the washroom again? Right, I suggested, yeah, because he had started getting aggressive a little bit again. I suggested to go to the bathroom. He let me stay in there by myself while he stayed outside the door at that time. And what happened then? And then I told him, well, I, I was contemplating, I was asking God, shall I make my move now? And I was going to just jump out the window. But when I got out, for some reason, I asked, could I have another beer? Yeah. And what did he do? And he, he reaches over, he guides me over and reaches in and get a beer. He still and, got you on the cuff. Yeah. And then he tells me, I told him, uh, I want to sit in the front because it's an air conditioner. And I was just going to try to jump out the window or go for the door or whatever. And because the back bedroom didn't have an air conditioner, only in the front. So I suggested we sit on the couch. I had unbutton my shirt to try to make him feel more at ease. And then, and then I just sat on the couch like, and he just start. What floor did he live on? Going out of himself again. Yeah. Going out of himself? Yeah, he was like paying me no attention at that time. Like yeah. he wasn't there? He was, yeah, he started the chanting again and it's like just sitting there, you know. And then I just, for some reason, I said, well, I need to go to the bathroom again. And he didn't follow me at that point. So I reached up, I got up, and then I got hit him and I ran out. So you hit him. Right. Did you have any other belongings there? Yeah, I have my bag right there at the end of the couch. Damn, that's so fucking scary. Because I think, like, uh, there were, like, deadbolts on there. So he had to, like, hit him, run, and then, like, fucking unlock everything and make sure that he wasn't behind him. Oh, that's so scary. So I sit in exactly the same place that I sit when I went in there. So when you got up, he let go of your cuff to let you go to the bathroom again? Uh, he didn't even, he just like, just let me stay there. I was going to go for the window. At that point, he didn't even have the cuff. It's like I wasn't even there anymore. Yeah. And when you saw that, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> seized the opportunity. I said, well, at least I'm going to die trying. I'm not just going to sit here, you know. Well, what'd you do, son? Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. And what happened? Then I made it outside. So he wasn't able to bring you back bring in? Bring me back in there, no. He tried. He tried. And as you left that apartment, as you got away from him, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you again, mm -hmm. what impressions were made on your mind by the conduct of Jeffrey Dahmer 
by the actions of Jeffrey Dahmer, by the manner, expressions, and conversations of Jeffrey Dahmer that you observed. Can you give us some words? It's like I told the policeman that this freak, this crazy guy, was trying to hurt me. Yeah. Did you run out of the building? Yes, I did. Thank God they believed him, Did you him, right? summon help? Yes. Milwaukee Police Department? That's correct. Did they come back there with you to the apartment? Right. What? They bring you back? Don't want they bring you back to the apartment? No, I don't want to go back. Did you eventually go back into the apartment with the Milwaukee police officers? Yes. Well, you got to go back there. Oh, my God. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Wait, weren't serial killers rampant in like 70s, 80s, 90s? So by the time this happened, serial killers not like a foreign term to like officers. Like, oh, my God. He had to go back there. <laughs> and then he was arrested. Right. You gave a statement to the Milwaukee police a few hours later? <coughs> yeah. I guess you could say a few hours, yeah. Uh, I feel for Jeff because of his childhood, too. He, I heard that his, he had, like, a mother that was needy and then a father who was, like, I don't know. He was just, like, an academic achiever or something. But, like, I don't know. I didn't really hear anything else, but I didn't really look in too much into it. Through your lawyer, I had uh, you come to Wisconsin to testify. That's correct. Other than your expenses, you're not being paid anything, no. correct? Is that true? That's true. Oh, Thank you. So Thank you. Mr. McKeon, how long do we anticipate the cross-examination of this witness? I'd say at least half an hour, Your Honor. Okay. That being the case, I think it's appropriate that we take a recess at this time. About 15 an hour, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. McKeon, how long do we anticipate the cross-examination of this witness? I'd say at least half an hour, Your Honor. Okay. That being the case, I think it's appropriate that we take I don't know, man. I feel like that was the, the prosecutor. I don't think that was the defense attorney that was asking those questions. 1991, July 22nd, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, police officers spot Tracy Edwards running down the streets in handcuffs. And upon investigation, they find one of the grisliest scenes in modern history, Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Oh, if we click on this, there's going to be like pictures or something. Uh, Edwards told the police that Dahmer had held him in his apartment and threatened to kill him. Although they initially thought the story was dubious. The officers took Edwards back to Dahmer's apartment. Dahmer, oh, he was still at the apartment. I thought he would like dip out. Dahmer calmly explained, oh, you know what? He probably didn't dip out because he was, he already got away with it last time. The last time his victim ran and the police brought them back, he was able to convince the policemen that, hey, you know, this guy's lying. What are you talking about? Uh, Dahmer calmly explained that the whole matter was simply a misunderstanding and the officers almost believed him. However, they spotted a few Polaroid photos of dismembered bodies and Dahmer's was, was arrested. Uh, when Dahmer's apartment was fully searched, a house of horrors was revealed. In addition to photo albums full of pictures of body parts, the apartment was littered with human remains. Several heads were in the refrigerator and freezer, two skulls on the top of the computer, a 57-gallon drum containing several bodies decomposing in chemicals that was found in the corner of the bedroom. There was also evidence to suggest that Dahmer had been eating some of his victims. Ugh. Neighbors told the detectives in the press that they had noticed an awful smell emanating from the apartment, but that Dahmer explained it was expired meat. However, the most shocking revelation about how Dahmer had managed to conceal his awful crimes in the middle of the city apartment building will come a few uh, days later. Apparently, the police had been called two months earlier about a naked and bleeding 14-year-old boy being chased down an alley by Dahmer. The responding officers actually returned the boy who had been drugged to Dahmer's apartment, where he was promptly killed. Uh, the officers who said they believed it to be a domestic dispute were later fired. Okay. A forensic examination of the apartment turned up 11 victims, the first of whom disappeared in March 1989, just two months before Dahmer successfully escaped a prison sentence for DM by telling the judge that he was desperately seeking to change his conduct. Oh, my God. 
Uh, Dahmer later confessed to 17 murders in all, dating back to his first victim in 1978. The jury rejected Dahmer's insanity defense. Good. Uh, was sentenced to 15 life terms. He survived one attempt on his life in July 1994, but was killed by another inmate on November 28, 1994. Um, let's see, a little bit of background story on Tracy Edwards. That's the man that was testifying earlier. It tells the story of Jeffrey Dahmer. A Milwaukee serial killer was killing, convicted of killing 17 victims, all male between the years of 1978 and 1991. Yeah, it's no wonder he got so fucking cocky. He wasn't caught for so long. Crime drama sees American Horror Story star uh, Evan Peters take on the role of Dahmer, who has been applauded for his performance. The first episode of the series shows viewers what happened on the night. Oh, he was caught and arrested, ending his reign of terror. Uh, we see the capture through the eyes of Tracy Edwards, the man who escaped Dahmer alive and led police to his apartment, resulting in the arrest in 1991 and incarceration the following year. But who is Tracy Edwards and where is he now? Uh, Tracy Edwards met Dahmer when he was 32 years old. Him right there. On July 22nd, 1991, Edwards and two other men met the serial killer in a bar in Milwaukee when Dahmer offered them $100 to come back to his apartment. Edwards accepted the offer, joined Dahmer at his apartment. Uh, Sean J. Brown portrays Edwards in the Netflix series. Once in Dahmer's apartment, Edwards became wary of him when he attempted to handcuff him before brandishing a knife at him. He was led into Dahmer's bedroom with the pretenses of watching a film, but when the killer was distracted, Edwards struck his head before fleeing the apartment. From there, he flagged down two Milwaukee police officers who accompanied him back to the Dahmer's apartment. Oh, God, I would have had chills if I had to go back to that apartment. Uh, the officers discovered Polaroid pictures of dismembered victims and later found body parts, including two skeletons. He was arrested. He admitted to it. Uh, what happened to Tracy Edwards after Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested? Uh, Tracy Edwards would go on to testify against Dahmer in court in 1992, playing a key role in the legal proceedings that led to his conviction. Edwards explained during court testimony that Dahmer was not the same person he met at the bar when, they had been when he had been taken to the bedroom. Uh, his face structure seemed different. It was, like, it was like he wasn't him anymore, he says. Dahmer pleaded guilty to 16 counts, uh, for which he received 16. Why are we getting different stories? I thought it was 17 and then 15. Like 16, but okay, I don't know. Uh, after being, so this is, where is Tracy Edwards now? After being hailed a hero for putting an end to Dahmer's killing spree, Edwards found himself in the trouble with law. In 2011, he was charged with homicide after being arrested alongside another man on suspicion of throwing a man, Johnny Jordan, to his death from a bridge. In 2012, uh, he pled guilty to a reduced charge of aiding a felon and spent half a year in prison and two years of extended supervision. Uh, according to ABC News, Edwards faced several police charges, including theft, drug possession, property damage, and failure to pay child support. Um, Pop Buzz reported at the time of his interest, Edwards was unhoused, had been moving between different shelters since at least 2002. Yeah, no doubt that this fucking experience like fucked him up. Oh, it's so sad. It was so sad. I was so fucking sad. I wonder how his life would have been different had he not encountered. Well, God, I guess it's really hard to say stuff like that, right? Because like, if he wasn't the one that encountered Jeffrey Dahmer, then who knows how long he would go on his killing spree for? But 